Hello, everyone, and welcome to the class. We are live right now. We have over 140 people here for this class. We are talking all about WordPress. I am joined today live with Mr. Mark Collier, and uh, this is his first time in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So I am basically going to be manning the chat window for those people who are here live. For those of you who have never been to one of our live classes, uh, you can check them out. We are a completely free service. Uh, just go to our website at pcclassesonline.com. Uh, we really want to hear your feedback. We are always trying to get better at what we do. So if you want, what you can do is at the end of this class, leave us a comment in the section below. Let us know how we did. We want to know how we can do better. So um, really constructive feedback. We much, much appreciate. Mark, take it away. Oh, so, I'm sorry. We have... <laughs> Damn it. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> See, it, it doesn't take me long to screw up. So we have a couple quick things we want to go over uh, really before we begin because this is one of the most difficult topics for us to teach. So the first thing we want to talk about is if you have not yet started building a website. There's a couple of things you should know about. And I want to mention there are a ton of links that are going to be in the notes section of this video. If you're watching us on YouTube, you're going to find them uh, where it says show more. Just beneath the video, that'll reveal it. If you're watching on our website, it'll be just beneath the video. So getting a domain name and hosting. Okay, there's a lot of different companies that are out there, and we all have our different opinions. Um, the one that we tend to recommend and, and who we use is a company called Bluehost. Uh, you'll find a link in the description of this video. We like to be very transparent with all of you. A lot of the links that you'll see below, uh, we have formed relationships with these companies, but we formed relationships after we were already using them, okay? These are legit relationships. So if you do use any of those links, we do usually get a small commission um, for that. It's not anything really significant, but it does help us keep doing what we do. So Bluehost is who we recommend for both the domain and getting the uh, um, uh, server uh, hosting. Uh, hosting, sorry, having a brain fart on my end. Um, and if you need help with setting that up, their support is really, really good. I also want to mention if you have problems with WordPress, we have heard from other people that um, Bluehost has offered support with um, people who encounter problems with WordPress. You know, it's not unheard of, trust me. Um, the other thing you can always do is you can always just simply Google if you have a problem with WordPress. Mark's going to kind of show you that, I think, in just a moment. When it comes to getting graphics for your website, uh, we want to give you a few different resources here. Um, the first one is a really great website. The photos that you're about to see in the website that we've built and that we're going to be building live for all of you uh, is from a website called depositphotos.com. They have really high quality imagery. Um, they're a fantastic website. The other is uh, a service. It's a web service. It's free for the most part called canva.com. For those of you who are here live, Mark is actually teaching a class on Canva later on this month. Um, and for those of you who are watching uh, the video right now, um, you can look for it on our website by then. You know, it might have already come out. Um, but Canva is a really easy tool to help you design some really nice looking graphics. So uh, I think I've covered everything that we need to get started here. Mark, jump into it. All right, all right. Okay, so before we get started here, I'm going to I'm going to show you a website that we're going to build today. But before we jump into that, I just want to kind of frame today's uh, class and make sure you all know what we're trying to do. The main purpose of today's class is to teach you the basics about WordPress. We intentionally are using the 2015 theme that comes with your WordPress installation. Um, in the future, we're going to probably do some classes on some premium themes. But for, for this time, we want to just show you how to get in and out of the basic features of WordPress. So there are going to be a number of different things that either um, I'm going to show you that this theme actually can't do out of the box that another theme could possibly do. And uh, I just want to make sure that you know the scope of this class and what we're trying to cover. So uh, with that in mind, let me drag my window down here so you can see it. And I'm going to show you basically what we're going to try to accomplish today. Woohoo, donuts. By the way, I should have probably mentioned, if you're hungry, um, you're going to hate me. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> right. So we're going to build just a really basic uh, site today called David's Donuts. And it's just going to have some uh, some demo pages like uh, a home page and a products page and maybe a news page and contact. 
And uh, we're just going to fill in those pages as we go today, add some graphics and that type of thing so that you can learn how to generally get around. And again, there are a couple of things that this particular theme cannot accomplish. And I'm going to show you that as well because I think it's important that you know the difference between what a free theme can do and possibly what a premium theme can do. So this is the site that we're going to build today. And we're going to add some text and some uh, graphics in there and maybe an embedded map perhaps and also work on adding pages on, on the left side. And so when you first log into your website or when you first log into your WordPress installation, you're gonna see a dashboard that looks something like this. And depending on how wide your monitor is, you may have two columns of uh, widgets here. You may have three, it all depends on the width of your monitor. And the widgets that show here can vary depending on what you've turned on and off. For example, you can reduce the size of these particular widgets just by clicking the little up or down arrow right here and making it hide. And you can also drag them around to the two different columns that are here to put them in the order that you'd like to see them in. Also, if you'd like to just turn some of them off or not see them, you can go up here to where it says screen options in the top right. And then when you click on that, it's going to drop down and depending on what page you're on, it's going to show different options here. And it says show on screen. And if you don't want to see something like, for example, at a glance, you can just unclick it and it goes away. And you can unclick any one of these and they will all not be shown. So if you're ever on this page and you're like, where did the options go? That's the first place to look. That can be very confusing. Absolutely. That's a great point. In fact, I'm going to show you that on when we start creating pages for our new website here in a little bit, because it honestly, it took me a few months to figure out where that option was and what was all up there. So you can customize this page to look however you'd like. And let me make another addition. For example, David and I both have our own logins to the PC Classes Online page. And when I log in, I can see a different dashboard than him because you can customize this for each user. So that's important to know as well. So over on the left side, you've got your navigation or your menu. And I'm not gonna go over every single thing that's over here because you're not gonna use all of them today, but I will hit the highlights. Um, so as you can see on the top on the left, we have our dashboard, which is where we are now. And then the next one underneath that, underneath home is updates. And I wanna stop there for just a moment because this is a really important tab that a lot of my clients have somehow ignored and it's really important that you not do that. Updates, let me just let me just show you what's actually there. When I click on updates, it's gonna show me what updates I need to uh, install or update for my site. And in this case, it says I'm using the latest version of WordPress and it says all my plugins are up to date and my themes are up to date. However, there will be a time in the future, probably in the next few days, where something's going to come out with an update. And it's going to have a little number inside a red circle that shows right here next to updates. And you need to pay attention to that because most of the time the updates are related to security. And you, of course, want to keep your website nice and secure. So you want to update your, your plugins and your themes as often as you can. Um, there are some exceptions because you want to make sure that any updates to plugins that come out are compatible with the version uh, of WordPress and the theme that you're using. Uh, but outside of that, you want to make sure that you keep things updated. Okay, so we'll jump down here to post. The, uh, that is, as it sounds like, that is where you add a new blog post. And we'll, I have an actual, I have an entire uh, class dedicated to your first WordPress blog post. So if you want to learn that, uh, in more detail than we go over today. You can check that video out as well. And we're gonna put that in the description so you are aware of that. So we won't go very deep into uh, posts today uh, because we already have that resource for you. Uh, media is where you up upload all of the different pictures and videos and uh, files that you wanna use on your site. And not, not just photos and videos, also uh, would that apply to, uh, well, I'm asking, would that also apply to like something like an audio clip? Yes. Okay, so really anything that you're, any files of any kind, Perfect. That's where it goes. Great. That's a great addition. And, and you can also do a PDFs or Word docs, any file at all you can upload there. Perfect. That's a great question. I'm so glad David's here. Woohoo! Okay. Gold star for me. <laughs> That's right. Um, you can go to recess early. Okay. And uh, then we've got pages, which is just what it sounds like. That's where you view what pages you currently have and you add new pages. Comments are where uh, somebody might leave a comment on a blog post if you've got uh, comments enabled. Uh, feedback is uh, where you see what someone has filled out on a contact form. 
I'm going to skip down here a little farther. Appearance is a, a tab that you're going to use a lot uh, as you're building your site because when you roll over appearance, you see a lot of different options here. Your themes, customize widgets, menus, header, background. Uh, Mojo Themes is actually a, a plugin that comes in if you're using Bluehost. If you're using another service uh, for your hosting, you may not have that. And then Edit CSS and Editor. These are all things that you'll probably use, or most of those you use quite often. Plugins is where you will install plugins to add additional functionality to your site. And uh, there are tens of thousands of plugins available. So you'll probably use that. In fact, I just did a video last or earlier this week on my top seven plugins that I use for every website that I build. So you might want to check that out to see the ones that I recommend as well. And I might mention some of those today. And we'll, of course, post the links to those in the description of this video. Like I said, we're going to give you a lot of resources in that notes section. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then users. That's where, of course, what it sounds like, that's where you would add other users for your website. For example, David and I are both users on our website and you can uh, assign somebody at a, a particular login level, like they can be an administrator or an editor or whatever, depending on what you need them to be. Um, and then there's tools and there's settings, and we'll talk about settings here in just a minute. In fact, let's just go ahead and jump into settings right now because this is a, a good thing to do pretty early on. So if you roll over settings, and it, the flyout comes out here and the first thing is called general. Let's go ahead and click on general. And what we're going to be able to, there's a number of things we're going to do here, but we're only going to focus on a couple at the moment. You can put in the site title and the site title is what shows up right up here in the, uh, in the browser tab where it says David's Donuts. And then the tagline, just another WordPress site. What was the uh, one that you came up with the other uh, day? David's Donuts. They're totally fat free in the middle. <laughs> Free in the middle. Very good. So that's our tagline. And when I save it, the uh, browser tab will update when I when I refresh. So that's what you can do there. Your WordPress and site URL. That's going to be something that we'll probably talk about in a in a future video. But for now, this is probably going to be pre-populated with the address of the site uh, when you set up your hosting. So don't mess with that unless you understand what you're doing. Uh, and then email address. This is what you want to put in. Uh, whenever somebody fills out a comment or anything, any notifications that come from your website, you're going to want to make sure that that email address is your email address. Otherwise, you will never get the notifications, which is kind of important. And uh, I'll skip through most of this at the moment, but you might want to go ahead and set your time zone so that things are tagged at the correct uh, time so that it won't throw you off. Same thing with date format, whatever you prefer and that kind of thing. And then you go down to the bottom and you click uh, Save Changes. And then we're done there. And then the next thing I want to do is um, let me let me take a, let me take a stop here for just a moment, and I'm going to show you what the site looks like right now as it sits because this we haven't done anything yet. This is what the site looks like uh, when we haven't done any customization whatsoever. This is the way it comes out of the box with the 2015 uh, WordPress theme, and so it has a side navigation or side menu. And then the content content is over here on the right. And right now, what it's showing is it's showing a uh, sample blog post called "Hello World," and that just comes with your first WordPress installation. And we're going to edit this here shortly and change this out. But it doesn't have any color; it just has a slightly uh, darker color here, and then white on the uh, sidebar or the menu. And if I were to refresh this, I believe that it should show our new. Yep, there we go. They are totally free, fat free in the middle. It updated there, and it also updated in the uh, navigation, or I'm sorry, in the browser tab in the top. So you'll see that. And what we're going to do is we're going to bounce back and forth and see this develop as we build the site. So again, this is where we're headed, and this is where we currently are. So let's jump back over to the admin panel. And let's start working through this. And it, if you've got questions that are directly related to what we're doing, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. And uh, David will keep track of those. And I may stop uh, through this from time to time to, to answer some if they're uh, related to what I'm doing right at the moment. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, then we'll try to address those at the end. Uh, so go ahead. Do you, and, do you want a quick one? Yeah, go for uh, it. We have a, a couple of good ones that are coming in here. Um, <laughs> Yvonne was asking a question, is there a way to, see, when you were talking about plugins, is there a way to see a list of plugins that no longer work with the new update? Man, that is a great question. Um, 
uh, let me make sure I understand. I'm going to answer that two ways because I'm not entirely sure which way you're asking. So if you are considering adding a new plugin that you don't already have in your site at the moment, when you go to the plugins tab, and in fact, I'll go ahead and do that now, uh, but I'll, I'll try not to be ADD and jump all over the place. Um, but when you go over to plugins and click add new, you can see right here on some of these featured ones, uh, it's going to say compatible with, I'll highlight it right there, compatible with your version of WordPress. And so it'll tell you whether it's been tested with your particular version or not. And you see that all of these right here, this one right here, for example, theme check is untested with your version of WordPress. Danger, danger, and danger. So, <laughs> and, and that doesn't automatically mean it won't work, but you do want to be careful because you just don't you just don't know. So will it cause harm potentially? And if it does, can you just simply uninstall and it's like nothing happened? Ah, ah. See, now he just kind of teed that up for me because he knows that that answer is not as uh, easy. What? Are you implying that I already know the answers? Yes, I think so. Um, so if you install a plugin that has been untested with your version of WordPress, that does not mean that it won't work. It might work. It might work great, but it also might not work. And here's, there are so many different possibilities of what might happen. I'll give you a couple real quick and then we'll move on. It might conflict with another plugin, which might, who knows what that's going to do. It might cause your plugins not to work. It might crash your site. There's really no way to know because there's so many different plugins. Um, and so it, it, there's really no way for me to answer what would happen because they're all so very different. But what I would first do before you install any plugin is to see if it's been tested with your version of WordPress and then go to that plugins page and look at the reviews and the comments to see if there's any indication that there might be a problem. So that's a good question. Let me keep rolling here and uh, David will keep collecting those uh, questions as we go. So. The first thing that I want to do, let's go back to, let's. so here's our demo real quick. You see we've got a wooden background over here on behind the menu or the navigation. And then we have just a large picture of donuts, which is making me very hungry. And uh, we're probably going to have donuts for lunch, whether it's appropriate or not, just because I'm staring at it. Mm. And, uh, and then we've got some pictures of some donuts here and some text. So I'm going to go ahead and start by first going back to our admin. And we're going to add some pages uh, into the menu here. And then we're going to then customize the background. And uh, I'll talk about why there's not a logo here in just a minute. In fact, David, if I, or one of you guys in the chat, if I don't mention the logo here in a few minutes, uh, make sure that I do because that's that's really important to talk about. Noted. Wait, what? Never mind. Yeah, right. Okay. You know what? In fact, I'll just do that right now. Um, <laughs> one, one of the things that you need to be aware of uh, for some free themes, in fact, for premium themes as well, is they all have different functionalities built in. And one of the things that the 2015 uh, theme does not have is it doesn't have built in a way to put a logo in there in the, in the menu or in the top. And so you are stuck with doing a couple of things, either adding some code to make that happen or to use a plugin that will allow your logo to be put in there. And I, I, I intentionally left it this way because I want you to see that even people that work with WordPress all the time can run into issues with plugins. So the only way in uh, 20, the 2015 theme that you can get it a uh, theme in there, uh, I'm sorry, a logo in there, is to either do code, which I don't want to do in this class because I'm not trying to teach code. So what I did was a couple days ago, I found a plugin that was supposed to allow a, a logo to automatically be populated into there. And strangely enough, it worked earlier in the week and then when I did the live class on Thursday, the uh, plugin all of a sudden mysteriously did not work during the live class. And so this is what happened is um, when I decided uh, yesterday and this morning to try to find a different solution that would be easy for everyone in the class, I uninstalled the plugin that was not working and it crashed the entire site. That's not good. That's not good. And of course, I can figure out ways to fix it, but I wanted to leave it here because what I did was I went ahead and reinstalled the plugin again, and it doesn't display the logo like it's supposed to, but it displays instead this these words 2015 demo with a square around it, indicating that that's where the, the graphic is supposed to be, but it doesn't display. So, so one of the things we, we wanted to make very clear, especially to those of you who have not yet started building a website, yes. is this should be a major thing that you should be aware of. 
in why you may want to purchase a premium theme over the free theme. Right. Because a lot of the premium themes come pre-installed <laughs> with these plugins that you know are going to work. And frankly, it just makes it work better and more reliably. Um, you don't want to obviously be, you know, if this was an actual business and not just something we mocked up, you wouldn't want your whole site to crash just because you tried to put your logo right. at the top left. It's ridiculous. Well, in fact, I, I, I specifically am not trying to malign the person that made this plugin, so I'm not going to mention to you which one it is because that's not my purpose. But I will tell you the mistake that I made that really probably caused this, and I'll go ahead and just tell you. You know, I mentioned a, f a few minutes ago um, about making sure that a plugin was tested with your particular version of WordPress, like it says right here. The other thing you always want to look at is this right here. It says last updated three weeks ago, or last updated one day ago, or one month, or one month, six months. In other words, you want to make sure that this plugin has been updated relatively recently. Well, I violated my own rule, and I downloaded a plugin that had not been updated in two years. And that's you know what? Yeah, bad sign. Lo and behold, guess what? It didn't work, So, or it crashed. So just be aware of that. So I'm going to move on from that, but I wanted you to know that in the 2015 uh, theme, you cannot natively add a logo in here. So um, I'll be interested to know if any of you guys are actually using the 2015 theme, if you would find a way to get a logo in there easily. I know how to do it with code, but if you find a plugin to do it, that would be great. So let us know about that. So I'm going to move on and we're going to add some pages. So the first thing you want to do is go over to your menu on the left and you want to hover over the word pages and you can either click on the word pages or you can click on add new. It doesn't really matter, go to the same place. So we're going to go to add new. And when that comes up, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss this little pop up there. And I'm going to add home page first. So you just simply type a title up here. And then all I'm going to do right now, I'm not going to add any content here yet. I'm just going to click publish. And then when it comes back, I'm going to add another three um, pages as well. We'll go back up to add new on the top. And I'm going to add a page called Donuts and publish. And it's eventually going to come back for me. Here, let me try it one more time. Would you like me to uh, start singing? Yeah, you know, actually, that's going to make the likes go through the roof, I'm sure. I specifically don't want you to start singing. <laughs> oh, wah, wah, wah. Okay, so I'm going to add, quickly add another one here. In fact, I'll, I'll maybe just add one more for the sake of time. I will add our contact page and publish. So, of course, right now there's no content in any of these pages. And the other thing you need to know about WordPress is just because you add a page doesn't mean it's going to actually appear in the menu. So even though those pages are there, if we go back to our website so far and refresh, you're going to see that there's absolutely nothing that's changed at all. It, we have not got any pages listed over here. So even though we've added them, now what we need to do is we need to add them to our menu and there's one other step that we need to take. So the, first of all, I want you to go down to settings right here and we're going to go over to reading. All right. I'm going to click on reading. And what we're going to do is right now, the way that the website is set up is that it is showing your blog posts on your home page. But we want to change it from blog post to what's called a static page to display something different. So right here, you see it says front page displays and it says your latest post. We're going to change it to a static page. And then I'm going to go to front page and click this down arrow. And I'm going to click home because I want our front page to be our home page. And then if we had a blog built in, we would click post page and we would click the blog page here in the list. I don't actually have one yet. I'll go ahead and click sample page just for now. And then we're going to go down here and click save changes. And now not a lot's going to change, but I'll go ahead and refresh here. And now you see that it says home. And then the only reason that it's showing edit and leave, leave a reply, I'm sorry, the only reason it's showing edit is because we are currently logged in. An, an outside user would not actually see the word edit right here. So now let's go back to our admin side. And now we're going to add those pages to our menu. So if you go over to the side and go to appearance and then go down to menus, 
Right now, it's asking you to create a new menu and give it a name. So I'm going to type main menu. You could call this anything you want. I think my, when my son was helped me work on some different things, he called it main menu of mainness. So you can call it anything you want because no one's going to see it. But it does help you to identify which menu you're currently working with. So I'm going to click create menu. And then when that comes back, it's going to show right here is our main menu, which there isn't anything there. But here are our pages that we can put in the menu. So I'm going to click Home, Donuts, and Contact. And I'm going to click Add to Menu. And they're going to show up right over here in just a moment. So now here are the three that we are going to add to our menu. Next thing you can do is you can drag them in the order that you'd like them to be displayed. So you can click and drag Home up to the top. And I can take Contact down to the bottom. And then uh, you can click Save, which I'll do that now. And then when we go back to our website and refresh, you're going to see, oh, sorry, pardon me, hold please. See, I missed something. This is important. It didn't do anything because down here on the menu settings, you need to click where in the theme it's going to be displayed. So I'm going to click primary menu and click save menu. And then now when I go refresh, we've got home, donuts, and contact right here. And then I'm going to talk about this other contact content here below in just a moment. Uh, Mark, would you like me to throw you one of the questions uh, from the chat? You know, that's what I live for. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, there's there's quite a few great ones here. Uh, Katie had a question. Does the site go live right away, or are you able to work on it offline before actually making it live? That's an excellent question, Katie. Uh, so it, there's a lot of variables on that as well, but... There, there are different parts inside WordPress that go live as soon as you click save, and there are other parts that don't. For example, on this particular page uh, regarding the menu or the menu structure, as soon as I click save menu, whatever changes I made go live right then. Okay. The only way that you could, uh, there's a couple ways that you could have it not go live, like you could build this site offline on your own computer locally. Um, mo most people don't do that, but you, you can do it that way and then upload it later. It's a little more complicated. Or you can build it somewhere else on your server that is not your primary domain name so that no one's looking at it. Uh, but as a general rule, a lot of these changes that you make do go live right away. The ex some of the exceptions would be if you created a page or a post, you could save it as a draft and then it would not actually go live until you published it. Also, if you created a page, which we're going to do in just a minute, or as you noticed, when we created those pages, until we added it to the menu, no one actually saw it. It never showed up. So th those are a couple options on, on how when things are shown live and when they're not. I don't know if that answered your question. If it didn't, feel free to give us another question and we'll see if we can get back to it. But that's a great question. While we're on the menu structure here, I want to show you also how to make a sub page. You know how when you hover over a, uh, a page name on a website, a lot of times there'll be a drop down below it. And uh, of course, I just realized I'm using hand gestures like you can actually see me. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, let's say that you wanted uh, to for donuts to be a sub page of home. It's really easy. All you do is you click on donuts and drag it to the right. Snaps right in. And it snaps right in. In fact, I think that on this one, yes, if you wanted to do a second level of sub items, you could actually drag contact further. A sub of sub, a sub. Sub, sub. I, and I think because we're doing a donuts thing, everything's making me think of food. I, I yeah, want a sub sorry. sandwich now. So, yes. But that's all you do. And once you save it, then it becomes uh, uh, permanent and, that, and everybody can see it. I'm going to drag it back over. But that's how you would do a sub page. So I'm going to save this one more time. And I, there was a question from Thursday that I'm going to go ahead and answer now because somebody's going to have it. If you wanted to add an item to your menu that was a link to another website, like for example, if we wanted to put a link to PC classes in our menu, it's really easy to do as well. Go over here to this left side, and if you click Custom Links, then it gives you this option to put a URL in. So we're going to put pcclassesonline.com. And then, so you put any address that you want to there, and then what you want the text to say. So we're going to say, just to keep it short, we're going to say PCO. And I'm going to say Add to Menu. When I click Add to Menu, it's going to be right below Contact, right here. You can drag it in whatever order you'd like. And then when you click Save, I'm going to go back over here to the Live side and refresh. 
And now you see that PCO is one of the links here, and if I were to click on it, it would take you to our website. So that's how you can add an external link there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, but, and of course you could make that a sub item, you could drag it around, put it wherever you'd like. Now to remove something from here, if you just click the down arrow on the right side of that little box, you can go to remove right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna save it again and it'll be gone. Now, I want you to know that that is just removing it from your menu. It's not actually deleting the page. The page still exists. So that's important to know that distinction. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is that over in our demo, we've got this subtext like home, how sweet it is, or donuts. No, they aren't healthy. Who wants a healthy donut anyway? That kind of thing. Now, this is unique to this particular theme, but the, the way that you add that text is when you go back over to menus, normally there's gonna be a place right here for you to put a description, but it's not showing. David, where do you think it's hiding? In my pants. I, I don't know. Well, you, you said, <laughs> I can't believe you said that out loud. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Hi, gonna, everyone. I'm Steve Carell. How are you? Yeah, and I'm going to mute your mic now. Okay. No, no. So um, <laughs> up here under... St wow. How under to throw Mark Collier off his game. Well, there it was. <laughs> Make a pants joke. Uh, okay, uh, go right. ahead. Go ahead. But anyway, okay. So uh, if we want to add those... It's an option that's hiding up here under the screen options that I mentioned when we first started. And if you click the down arrow, this is all relative to what page you're currently on. It's gonna have different options depending on what page you're on. And you see that description right here is not clicked. So I'm gonna go ahead and click description. And then now I'm gonna close that. And when I come back to here again, you see that now there's a field here that wasn't here before. So make sure you always check the screen options if something's not showing. So I can write um, how sweet it is is whatever oh you know what my OCD is not gonna allow me to do that so sweet it is all right something like that and then under donuts we can say um, no they aren't healthy who wants a healthy donut okay and things like that and you can add whatever you'd like there and when you save the menu then we go back and we refresh and now you see that the subtitles are there as well. And of course the PCO button's gone. So you could add whatever you'd like there. That's, that's kind of a nice little add-on uh, that comes with this particular theme. Again, not all themes have that, but uh, this one does and it's really nice. All right, so I'm gonna move on to something else here. Is there any questions related to what we're talking about right now, David, that I could answer? Um, there's a few that are a little bit off topic. Good questions, but... Um not any really that I'm seeing here that okay. I think I we think are definitely are reading totally your questions. Want to yeah. let you know we're reading those and we're gonna we're gonna try to get all of them. But I'm gonna try to just stay in this um, flow here, and then if it's not about what we're doing right now, we'll try to get to it at the end. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's how you add items or, or pages to your menu. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to show you how to start adding uh, backgrounds and things of that nature. Okay. So. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go over to the left side again and go under Appearance. You're going to spend a lot of time under the Appearance tab there. And if you go down to Customize, <clears throat> then you are in the Customizer here, and it's going to show you a preview of your site here on the right. And then as you make changes here on the left, it's going to appear here so you can see what it looks like. And it's not permanent until you click Save up here. So back to your question earlier, I'm sorry, I've forgotten who asked that, but back to your question is, if you until you click save, this is not actually gonna go live. So uh, what you can do is go under, this area is called your header, and if you wanna go under header image and click that, it, it says you can apply the header on smaller screens and the sidebar on wide screens. And what it says here is you can crop images to your liking after clicking add new image, and they recommend a 954 by 1300 pixels. So if you want your picture to not stretch or be, or be stretched out of proportion, you wanna make it 954 by 1300. And as a side note, if you don't have a graphics program that you can make something like that in, canva.com is a great place to do that because you can actually tell it exactly how many pixels you wanna make something and make it really easy there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add new image here. And I'm going to, and it opens up our media library here and I could either go to Media Library and use anything that I've already uploaded, which in this case I haven't uploaded anything yet, or I can upload a new file, which I'll do that now. And then you just navigate to wherever 
you have your file. In this case, I've got some right here. I'm going to upload this wood background right here. And in just a moment, when it uploads, I'm going to click Select and Crop. And I've already made it the size I want it, so I don't have to crop it, but you could crop it to whatever size you needed. And then I'm going to click Crop Image, and now it's there. Now, we're going to talk about the color of the text in just a moment, but there's the background. So if I hit Save and Publish, and if I go back and refresh again, there it is. And we'll be able to change the color in just a moment. So now we go back over here. There are some other options here. This is also another place to uh, change your site title and, and tagline. And uh, you can turn things on and off here depending on what you, you'd like to show. And then if we go down to colors, you can change your base color scheme. For example, if you said dark, let's see what happens here. See now it changed, it automatically changed a number of settings for you, including the color over here and also the background as well as your uh, content background. And you could uh, click through these and see some basic options and see what it looks like. So you, you could just make a kind of a, a large uh, change right there if you like, or you can customize each one as you go down uh, and choose a background color and a header and sidebar text color and that kind of thing. So you see here where I'm in the header and sidebar text color, if I make that white, you see now I can read this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag it to the corner. You can drag anywhere in here and it'll change the color as you go. So I'm going to drag to white and I'm going to click save and publish. And now if you go back here, you will see that we are getting closer to our demo, which is right here. Okay. Oh, I just saw another little thing I'm going to mention. Over on the demo here, you see that the main navigation or the main pages are all caps. That's actually really simple. That's because when I was on the menu page, when I typed the name of the menu or the name of the item, you can type it in all caps or however you like, and it'll show up there as well the same way. So, good to know. Okay, cool. You want a uh, quick question mark? Yeah. I don't. I don't oh, know. I don't. Mark, I don't know please. if this is. I don't know if this is going to be a good one for now or later. So you can tell okay. me. Sure. Um, and a couple people have asked this question. So. Uh, I'm going to just, a few people asked it, I'm going to ask the version that Yvonne gave, which was, how do we set up a site so that we can work on it and no one sees it? Is there something like creating a sub, uh, uh, I think she means subdomain called like WP admin? Is there a way to not publish the subdomain until we are ready and then move it into the domain name? We'd really like to work on this uh, so, while it's in development so no one sees it. Yeah. There's actually a couple ways to do that. I, I There's one way that I like doing it that's probably the easiest thing for me personally. Um, there are two ways. You can either, uh, on your host, on your hosting program, you can go in and you, like for example, this one right here is called, you know, you can, you can see it, it's, it's not hidden. You can see pcclassesonline.com slash WordPress slash live 2015 demo. So that's where this page currently is. And unless somebody knew this address, they wouldn't know where to look for it anyway. So you can actually install it somewhere on your server that has an address that is not public. And then when you get done, you can, uh, Bluehost can help you, or if you know how to, you can point your domain to that specific folder on your server when you're ready for it to go public. However, I think if you're already, if you're working on a site that is not done yet and there isn't currently a site being shown, there's actually an easier way to do that in my opinion. Let me take a, hopefully 60 seconds, 90 seconds to tell you how to do this real quick. Really easy. If you create a page under pages, add new, and you can create a page called landing or a page called coming soon or whatever you want to, something of that nature. What you can do then is once you've made a page, you can just put your graphic on there or anything that you want just for people to see when they come to your domain. And then if you go down to settings and go back to reading where we were earlier, you can then say you want your front page to be, and you're going to choose landing or coming soon or whatever that page you made. And then what you do is after you do that, you save that. And then when you go to your menu under appearance, you go to menu and you can make a different menu that only has that landing page in it and no other pages. So in other words, when they come to your site, all they see is that one page and the other ones are still being developed in the background and you can work on them, but they only see that one page. And the only way they'd see the other ones is if they had the direct addresses to them, which they're not going to have. Good information. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people, quite a few of you were asking that in the chat right now. 
So great. There's also some plugins you can use that create landing pages for you. Those are really cool too. Those are great. But this is just, that's one of the easy, quick ways that I use. So excellent question. Uh, so let me get back to uh, where we were there. Of course, my got to focus back to where we were. So, so far we've, we've made the pages. We've changed the color over here. We've put in some subtext. Um, before we move on to the content over here, I'm going to show you where this stuff is coming from. These widgets right here, the recent posts and recent comments, archives and so on. I'm going to show you how to remove that and maybe how to add other things there if you want as well. Because if you notice over in our demo, we've got location and hours listed there. And uh, in fact, I'm just going to copy this real briefly so I don't have to type it again because I'm going to have to type it in a minute. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So that is that content over there is under appearance and widgets. So when you open up the widgets area, you see right now that there's search and recent posts and so on, just like you saw over on the sidebar of the demo we're building. And right now what I want to do is I want to get rid of these six different um, widgets here. So there's two ways you can do it. There's a slow way where you can just click the down arrow here and, and click delete and it does that. Or you can just drag it and drop it over here and just get rid of it that way just by dragging it back over into the available widgets area. And this actually happens live as you do it. So there's no save button on this page. Now if I go back and refresh again, you'll see that there's nothing over there. So that's how you get rid of those. And then if you want to put in our uh, our location and hours widget, all that that was, if you scroll down over here, you'll find one that says text. And if you just click and drag this back up to your widgets area right here and drop it, now we can click in here and we can put our text in here. You can put a title. This is like maybe location and hours or whatever you'd like it to say. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste in the text so I don't have to type it again. Uh, but there's like some ad an address and maybe some uh, hours and phone number and email address. And if you click automatically add paragraphs down here, what that's going to do is that's going to automatically put each one of these lines when you hit enter between these, it's going to automatically let them be displayed that way. If you don't, it's going to just run it all together. So I'll click save. And now we'll refresh and there's our location and hours, just like that. There are also other widgets over there that you can drag over there and play with as well, um, depending on what you want, like a calendar of blog posts or contact info, things of that nature. One thing just to um, add in here is, uh, I mean, obviously this is a demo page that it's not a real business, but um, for those of you who are business owners and thinking of doing something like this, you may want to reconsider publishing your actual email address on the website and instead using a contact form, which I believe we're going to show people how to do Perfect. in just a minute. Reason being, it's a great way to uh, just get a ton of spam <laughs> out is. there. If you only knew how much spam I get from that short period of time, well, not so short where I published my email address, trust me, I have, uh, it's one of my things I do as soon as I wake up is go through and delete all the junk. Yeah, that's right. So I would recommend that you don't that you don't uh, put an, uh, an exposed email address like that, but rather use the contact form instead. So that's a great, David, that's a good good reminder there. So the next thing we're gonna do is let's go over here and we're gonna put some content in here. And the first thing I wanna do, I, I've i told you that I don't wanna use any code when we do this, but actually there's gonna be just one little piece of code that I am gonna show you uh, how to get rid of this um, page title here. And we'll do that here in just a few minutes. In fact, David, in a few minutes, I, I closed a window, so I'm going to have to open another one. So when I get to that point, if you want to field some more questions for just a minute, we'll do that. Sure. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a picture over here, and I'm going to add some content below it. And also, while I'm here, you notice that all of the pages have this leave a reply at the bottom, and we want to turn that off. So let me show you how to do all that. We'll jump back over here to the admin side. We want to go over to Pages. And I'm going to click on pages so we can see a list of all the pages we have. And you see that here's our home page. So I'm going to hover over that and click edit. And now what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and turn off the ability for people to leave a comment on the page because that just doesn't make any sense. So normally you would scroll down here to the bottom and there'd be an option right here to turn it off, but it's not showing. I'm going to give you a second chance to guess where that is and we're not using the same answer as earlier. If it's not showing, where do you think we're gonna look? 
This is the part where I really hold back from giving you a sarcastic answer. Yes, just give me the oh, real one. Sorry, I've, I've been focusing on the chat, so why don't you just tell us? Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> so we're going to go to screen options up here on the top. And uh, we're going to click. There's two things up here. And this is kind of weird. What it's doing is you want to be able to turn off discussion and comments options on the pages. But you have to actually turn them on here so you can see them. Discussion and comments. And then now when you go down here, it says allow comments, allow trackbacks and pingbacks. We're just going to unclick both of those. And then now when we update the page, now you're going to see that that is going to be gone. And it's gone. So you're going to have to do that on every page on the 2015 theme because it automatically defaults to having that on. It depends on which theme you're using as to whether that default is on or off. But that's how you turn those off. So as we're working through there, if, you, if I forget to tell you on the other pages, you just simply go up here to screen options on each page, click the down arrow, turn on discussion and comments, and then go down to the bottom and turn off allow comments, allow trackbacks and pingbacks. So that's how you do that. Next, we're gonna add a picture and some content here. So right in this area is where you're gonna add your pictures and content. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna just click in this area and I'm gonna go up here to this button that says add media. I'm gonna click add media and it takes me to our media library and shows everything that I've currently uploaded to our website, which is uh, you know two background, wood backgrounds. So I'm gonna to need to upload something else. So I'm gonna to go to click upload files and I'm gonna select a file and I'm gonna to go to Davis Donuts and I'm gonna upload uh, maybe some header images. I'm not sure what I've got there. Yeah, okay. So let's use this picture of these donuts just for fun. I'm gonna double click on that. It's gonna load it into here. Now, while this is loading, you can bring in the picture that you wanna use and size it however you'd like, either uh, before you bring it in here, like in Canva or Photoshop or whatever you have, or you can possibly even crop it in here as well, depending on which way you prefer to do it. Now, before I click insert into page, I wanna show you a couple options here, right here under attachment display settings. The first thing is alignment, and you can have it aligned left, center, right, or none. I'm just gonna leave it at none. This is important right here. Link to. I don't typically want my big header image to be linked to anything. In other words, I don't want someone to click on the picture and go anywhere. I just want it to be displayed as a picture. So in this case, I'm gonna click the down arrow and I'm gonna say none. I don't want it to link to anything. And then size, it automatically defaults here in this case to medium size. I want it to actually come in at the size that I actually made it at. So I'm gonna go to full size, but you can pick whatever size you'd like. If it comes in smaller than you expected it to be, chances are you probably uh, just had something less than full size. Then click insert into page. And in just a moment, there's that nice big picture. And if I were to click update on the right and go back to David's Donuts. In fact, David, I'm gonna need you to go get some donuts right now. If you would do that, that would be great. I'm on my way. Thank you. Okay, so there's the picture. Again, you can make it taller or shorter depending on what you want, but for now, we'll just use that uh, as well. Again, we're gonna come back and turn this off here in just a little bit. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and put some content underneath the picture. And if you remember, right here we had first type of donut, second type of donut, that kind of thing. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'll show you how to do that. We'll go back to the admin or to the edit page. We're gonna scroll down below our picture. I'm just gonna hit return there. And we're gonna put in a picture and some text. So I'm gonna put in some text first and then the picture. I've got a little add on to my, um, my Chrome browser here for dummy text so that I don't have to type any. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this dummy text here just so we have some and I'm gonna paste some text. You can type whatever you'd like. And I'm gonna click a couple of options here. So I'm gonna paste it twice so that we have some dummy text. Next, I wanna go ahead and put those pictures of those donuts right here on the left side. So I'm gonna click my cursor right before the first word in the paragraph that I'm going, because that's where it's going to put the picture. Now, if I were to put it in the wrong place, I could drag it around, but it's nice to just put it in the right place first. So I'll put my cursor there. I'll go up to add media. I'm gonna upload a file again. Now, Mark, while you're doing this, uh, one of the questions we had from the other day was someone who was asking, well, what if I don't want the photo to be either absolutely on the left, absolutely on the right, or absolutely in the center? What if they want to drag it around? What are their options? Or is basically the answer that this is not the right theme for you? Okay, I think I understand what they're meaning. If they're wanting to like put it in a very specific place, like yes. maybe in a column or something of that nature, that's a great question. 
in the 2015 theme, there are not really any options to do that. You just simply have one large column. There are plugins you can use to make columns or there's code you can use to make columns. But if you want to just use this theme out of the box, it doesn't do that. Okay, good to know. That's a great question. Um, so again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off my, I'm gonna actually turn my alignment to left, but you could do this here or afterwards. Link to none, I'm gonna have it come in as, you know what, I'm gonna choose thumbnail, make it a little smaller, 150 by 150, insert into page. And there's that first donut. And you see how this text is starting to wrap around this particular picture. I'm gonna ignore that for a moment and I'll show you why. I'm gonna click down here to the next one. I'm gonna say add media, I'm gonna upload another file. I'm gonna grab my picture of my chocolate donut here and I got a great question for you, Mark, from uh, from Doug, who just brought this up. Uh, he's asking, are any images that you add to the site automatically optimized for web viewing, or do you have to do that step manually before you upload the image? Man, what's his name again? Doug. Doug, that is a great question. Thank you for asking that. No, they are not automatically optimized. There are some plugins that do that as well, but I highly recommend that when you bring a picture in, that you optimize it, and in case you guys don't know what I mean by optimizing, you want to make it as small uh, a file size as you can and still have it display well. In other words, you don't want it pixelized or pixelated, but you want to make it a small uh, file size. Um, I don't have the time right now to go into the different file sizes. Maybe we can talk about that some other time. But I would just say as small as your file size can be. In this case, I think, I didn't pay attention, but I think these are probably the uh, 30 to 40 kilobyte range, these uh, two donuts. So you want to keep them as small as you can. The reason why, if you don't do that, like I've seen people t go out and take their DSLR and they take amazing photos. And how, how big is an average photo in your... For me, if I'm doing JPEG, um, I can. it's still usually a few megabytes. At least Multiple, some, yeah. yeah. So let's say it comes out at like three megabytes or something. I've actually had a client that brought in something at eight and nine megs each. And when you put in pictures that are eight and nine megs each, you realize that the whole website's got to load all of those pictures. And so it's gonna load very, very slowly, so you don't wanna do that. Speed of dark. Speed of dark, that's exactly right. So you see that here in the backside, now back to, back to looking at our uh, donuts here, you see that it doesn't look like it's going to align correctly, but what I would do first is I would click update, and let's go and see what it actually looks like. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the backside, I'm gonna add a uh, an extra space here and I think they will align correctly. So let's go back over here. I'm gonna go right here and add one. There we go. Now, but I do wanna tell you that just because it looks correct here doesn't always mean that it's gonna look the same way on the other side. So let me look at that and I bet it's gonna line up just perfectly and there you go. So there's kind of the home page. You could add more items down here um, if you'd like. Uh, just for fun, I'll go ahead and I'll show you. Um, you saw that on the demo we had a map here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show you how to do that real quick. Um, so the way you do that, again, I wanna emphasize the way you do that in this theme. Because if you're using a premium theme, chances are really good that it's already gonna have a feature built in that shows you, that, that helps you add a map. In fact, even maybe customize the map through those features. But this one doesn't have it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Google Maps maps.google.com and we're just gonna look up, I don't know, we'll look up Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is pretty close to where I'm from. All right, and there's Kane's Ballroom, which is a great place to go see concerts. Um, Thank you for that random info. Yep, no problem. In fact, <laughs> I can talk about Dr. Robert J. Herman orthodontics treatment, anyway. Sorry. That's okay. Okay. Uh, that's where my, my daughter gets her... Uh, Fantastic. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> so um, what you can do is you can pull up whatever address you'd like. You can put in the address that you need. And then if you go down here to the right, uh, bottom right to the little gear option, you can go to share or embed map. And then go to click on embed map here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to choose what size you want the map to be, small, medium, large, or custom size. In this case, I'll just say I want it 800 by, I don't know, 300. It, you can choose whatever you want. And then what you want to do is you want to copy this code right here. And then we're going to go back to your page. And if you scroll down, it, let, I assume that I want to put it below these donuts here. So I'm going to space down a couple. And then here's what's really important. If I paste the code right here, it's going to actually display the code and not the map because right here, 
I am on the visual editor and not the text editor. So for this case only, I'm gonna go over to text and it's gonna show you the code that it takes to display what we have already. And I'm gonna go right below this and I'm gonna paste in that code. Then if I go back to visual, if you go back down here, it's gonna show my map here. So if I update and then go back to David's Donuts and Hopefully if I did it right, it'll load in just a moment. And there's the map. Very so cool, that's very cool. You, that's how you do that. All right, so let's take a moment and uh, field some more questions. Uh, and maybe if you can answer a couple or if you can field a couple, I'm gonna grab one thing real quick. A couple of people were asking, where are the best places to go to get the best premium themes? Um, and I wanna really emphasize, we, we do it, we, for this particular topic, Mark did a ton of research. Um, and plus, keep in mind, he is a full-time web designer also. So uh, we're going to include links to everything uh, in the description of this video. For those of you who are here live, it's going to be when it's published. Um, but there's so many different options out there. And frankly, part of it is, you know, Mark has worked with so many of these themes. He knows what they don't tell you necessarily when they're publishing it, you know, and you want to make sure you have a good theme that has a good amount of plugins that are really versatile. And, and when you're checking out a theme, don't just go based on whatever fake business they're advertising. Like with this one, like, okay, it looks great for donuts. Well, it's going to work great for a bunch of different businesses. You have to keep in mind that it's always placeholder text. And part of the difference between an amateurish looking site and a really, really good site is good photography, good graphics. So if that means paying, you know, a few dollars and I mean with deposit photos, it's it's a couple dollars per photo. Yeah, it's dollars, it's $2. worth the money. Um, a few people in the chat were asking me about um, how much should we expect to pay for these themes. So I, I went through the list, and they're usually it's not outrageous. It's usually averaging right around uh, fifty to sixty dollars. Yeah. But it you know what this is a tool. It's your business uh, presumably. So it's important that you make the right decisions and invest your money wisely. So. Um, I think it's absolutely worth 60 bucks. Yep, that's great. In fact, again, we are going to give you, uh, hopefully at the end, I'll probably be able to mention a couple of my favorite themes. We'll give you some links to those. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get rid of the uh, page titles here. And uh, I forgive me, one of you early, right before the class started, gave us a link to a plugin uh, to do this. And I, since I have, and I want to... I want to make sure I respect everybody in the class. I haven't personally tested that plugin, so I will not recommend it yet, but I bet it's going to be great. But we need to get rid of these page titles here, and the 2015 uh, theme does not automatically give us an ability to do that. Again, almost any good premium theme will give you just a click on, click off, but this one doesn't. So if you were to use Google, like I use, man, I know we both Google all kinds of stuff, and I just Googled WordPress uh, remove uh, WordPress 2015 remove page title and of course you can get just a little um, snippet of code to get rid of it so in this case I found some and I'll go ahead and put it in the chat I don't know how many of you guys are actually using uh, the 2015 theme but just in case uh, I went ahead and put the little snippet of code in there in the chat so hopefully that comes up for people to see and that's how you can remove uh, that's the code you can and I'll show you how to do this if you go back to the edit page and you go down to appearance and then edit CSS right here, you can take, you can go right here, I'll hit enter a couple times, and you can paste in this code and then save style sheet. And it was Randy, by the way, Randy from oh, the Netherlands. Thank you, Randy from the Netherlands. And then I'm going to refresh, and now you see that the page title is gone, and it looks a little better. So that's how you can do that. There are probably some other plugins that can do that as well. Um, again, another uh, plug for a good premium theme. All right. So now we've got our home page. We've got some content on there. I think that you guys can probably figure out. I'm not going to go ahead and add uh, content to the donuts page because honestly, it's exactly the same process that we just did with the home with the home page. So. I do want to do one more thing before we get into a bunch of questions. Uh, two more things, sorry. I'm going to talk about uh, permalinks, and I also want to show you how to add a contact form. All right? And then we'll start jumping into some questions from you guys. Uh, thank you for being patient. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add a content form first. So I'm going to go back here to Pages, 
and I'm gonna go to my contact page. And let me tell you, there are a lot of different ways to add a content a contact form. I'm going to go ahead and just use the built-in uh, contact form that comes with the Jetpack plugin. When you have the Jetpack plugin, it automatically comes with your install when you're using the 2015 theme. It automatically puts this button right here that says add contact form. It honestly, it couldn't be easier. I mean, you just click this button right here and it pops up with this little window and it's going to say, here's what your form will look like. And I've got a name, email, website, and comment fields. And I don't usually need someone to give me their website. So in this case, I'm just gonna hover over this little minus button. And I'm gonna click that and it's gonna delete it. And this is what my form's currently going to look like. If you'd like to add more fields to it, you can click add new field. And then you can label it like, um, I don't know, you know, where are you from? Now, of course you would not do that. And then you can choose what type of uh, field type you need, like a drop down or, or what, whatever kind of field type you need. You can decide whether it's required or not required, someone that have to, whether they'd have to fill that out. And then you can save the field. In this case, I'm gonna delete it. So this is all I need for the content form or the contact form. But before I click add this form to my post, I'm gonna go up here to email notifications and click that. And then I'm gonna enter my email address because if I don't, when someone fills out this form, I'm not gonna get notified. So I would just put in david at davidsdonuts.com and then message from your website or whatever you'd like it to say. Save and go back to Form Builder and then add this form to my post. And now it puts in this code and then if I click update and go back to our website and click contact, you can see that now there's a nice clean form there. Again, you could add pictures on the top, you could add other content, but we're not gonna do that for now because we've already kind of covered that. There's one other thing I wanna do before we jump into questions. If you go up here, you notice that in the address, the URL bar here, you see that this page name should be contact, but instead it's question mark page underscore ID equals eight. And you, you'll see that all the pages have some similar, um, it, with the exception of the home page, they've all got odd names like that. And we wanna fix that. We want it to actually say the name of the page. That's really easy. Let me show you how to do that. If you go back to our admin panel again, and you go down here to settings and to permalinks right here. And when the default uh, it will actually show a page number like question mark uh, P equals one, two, three or whatever. We're just gonna go down here to custom structure and click, I'm sorry, I'm gonna use post name, but you could use custom structure also. Post name and then go to save changes. And now when I go back to our site and reload it, and if I go to donuts, guess what? Right up here, the name of the page is donuts like it should be. So whenever I see a website that shows question mark equals P underscore 7549, I realize that it's someone that just doesn't know how to change that. So that's another great way uh, to update your site and make it look more readable for an average person. All right, so I think we've gone over quite a few different things to help you get started. Let me start seeing how I can do with your questions. Okay, so I'll throw a few at you here. Uh, one, I, I know the answer, but I'm gonna let you do it. Uh, can you use multiple themes within a single website? Well, you know, okay. That's actually, strangely enough, it's not as easy as you might think. The answer technically uh, is no, but you could actually do a subdomain, like for example, um, uh, if you did chocolate.davidsdonuts.com as a subdomain, you could actually install another theme on that because it's Good technically point. Good point. it's technically a separate website. So in that case, you so to your actual question, can you use multiple themes on one website? The answer is no. Very common question from Jules. How do you get rid of Powered by WordPress? Oh, that's in the, the okay. Now, every again, I, I can't emphasize this enough. The everything is different. Every theme is different, and um, so that's in the footer. And so in this case, you're going to have to actually go into some code to get rid of that for this. But on, again, on any good theme, any uh, premium theme, that's just simply an option under customize, and, and you can just simply type your own in there. Um, but in this case, it'll need to be code to get rid of that on this one. Uh, you want another one? Um, sure. Let's see. Uh, 
let's see. This is from uh, let's see. Uh, is the cost of a one is the cost of a theme a one time purchase or reoccurring? Also, images. Uh, some are reoccurring fees too. Great question. So a theme is a one-time cost. There are a few exceptions to that rule. There are some really good websites that actually you can buy a, a membership to. Um, I, one of my favorite ones just escapes me at the moment. Uh, but, oh, you're right. There's there's one called Elegant Themes, and you, you buy a membership to them, and then you have access to a whole bunch of different themes uh, for that membership price, but you do have to pay that on a recurring basis. Um, that's not generally what I do, but there are some exceptions to that. For the most part, when you buy a theme, it's a one-time expense. And then any good theme, when they do updates, like some of my favorite themes, they update every single month, and the updates are all free after that for a lifetime. You do, however, legally, you're supposed to, um, if you want to get updates and you want to use a theme on more than one website, you're supposed to buy a copy of it for each website, but it is not a recurring price. It's just a one-time fee. Now, regarding the pictures, those are also one-time fees. Um, but some of the places, including Deposit Photos, you have to buy a block of credits. Like I believe Deposit Photos, I think, is a $32 block of credits. And then you can use those all up. And there's no recurring price unless you, of course, want to buy more pictures. Okay. So. Uh, a question came in earlier, forgive me, I don't remember who it was that asked it, about when you, you were talking about installing updates. Uh, basically, should you back up the website before installing updates and also how? Yes, yes, and yes, you should definitely always back up, back up, back up. It's just like the rest of your computer. Back up and, and it'll save your butt. Uh, there are a number of different plugins you can use to back up your site. My favorite, it is not free, but my favorite is Backup Buddy, and that's made by a company called iThemes. And I did mention this in my video that I made a few days ago that's called Mark's uh, Top 7 WordPress Plugins. And uh, we're, uh, Backup Buddy is my favorite because you can set up a schedule and it will automatically back up your site every day, every week, every month, however often you want. And it can also send a backup of your site to your Dropbox or your Google Drive account, or it can email it to you. Um, so it's my favorite. It's not free, I believe. Uh, boy, I can't remember how much it costs off the top of my head. I believe it might be um, it might be eighty dollars a year. I think for two sites. Um, so that's what I would recommend. But absolutely, you should be backing things up before you update plugins, just in case it crashes something. Is that a good question? Right there. It's uh, the one that's listed there. I'm we sure. Already I, answered that one. We did answer that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's see, going through some of the other ones here. Um, maybe if you want to clarify, do you see the one from Janet right there, right beneath? Up, there you go. Do you want to clarify that? That's a good question. Um, okay. Not right now, though. Okay. Because it, it's a little deeper. Yep. Let me just take a look at some of these. Sorry for the delay. Sorry. We're just, <laughs> there are a lot of questions, so we're, we're um, looking through all of them. Oh, okay. Let me answer uh, Marnie, uh, Marnie's question. Is there a way to only show a .com address instead of showing a visit, visiting, seeing extensions like WordPress.com? Um, okay. So it sounds like if, you're, if your website, I, I'm making an assumption here, but if you have a, a website that ends with WordPress.com, like let's say it was markcollier.wordpress.com, that means you are using the WordPress.com um, side of WordPress, which is great. But what we are discussing today is specifically the WordPress.org, which the difference is with WordPress.com, you essentially are using, you are actually building your website on their server and you are using all of their elements to build uh, your site. And so if you want to use like your own domain name or if you want to use various plugins or themes, those are potential add-ons that you've got to pay for. And there's, uh, there's great, if you will Google what is the difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org? You will see some great resources out there that help you explain it. But what we're talking about here is uh, you installing WordPress on a server space that you have purchased from a place like Bluehost. And in that case, it's going to display at whatever domain name you set up as opposed to the like markcollier.wordpress.com. Um, you can uh, change that on WordPress.com, but I believe that's a paid add-on that you have to do. Uh, another question here, it's kind of a broad one, uh, it's at the very bottom, um, was what can we do to prevent getting hacked? Ha -ha. It's a tough one. 
It is, and I, there's there's a lot of steps to that. I uh, again, I I'm glad you asked that because I want to refer to my uh, plugins video that I did a few days ago. One of my favorite plugins is called iThemes Security. I highly recommend that you use that because it will protect you against all kinds of things. There are also some other great ones out there as well besides that one. There's one called I, I actually don't know how to pronounce it. It's Securi S U C U R I which is another highly rated one, which is great. Well, we'll put links. Yeah, we'll put links there too. Um, but I would definitely look for a plugin that will help you with the security. Depending on who your host is, they might also provide some uh, protection for that. But uh, iThemes Security is my favorite one, and it, it does a great job. Fantastic. Are we uh, are we good at this point? Are we gonna I think we on? are. All right, folks. Well, thank you so much for taking your time to come out here and join us. For those of you who've been watching us on YouTube, uh, again, we really do, and, and also the website, we do appreciate your feedback. Leave us a comment in the section below. If you're watching us on YouTube, we do, of course, appreciate it. If you do, click that little like button, the thumbs up button. Uh, we will see you next time. This is David A. Cox along with Mark Collier. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.